stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling. All right, join me right now is UFC Bantamweight Julio Arce. Julio, man, it's been one year, actually more than a year, the last time I spoke with you. How's life going? Dude, life's going good. You know, I've had, you know, I, got, I had to get a couple of injuries taken care of, so it put me out for a little bit, but glad to glad to be back, man. I was waiting for this, and of course, I'm going to make my debut at 135, so I can't, well, yeah, my return to 35, mm -hmm. so I can't wait for that. All right, there's a lot of stuff to delve into, man. You've been gone for around 16 months, so let's talk about the the move to Bantamweight first. When did you decide to move down? When what what made you? What prompted this? Um, I think it was something that uh, I was kind of discussing with my team. You know, as somebody who's a, I was fighting at featherweight, and these guys were, you know, like these guys are actually just too they're too big for me. You know, like you can clearly see the size difference between my two opponent, my oh my opponent. I mean, I fought a dude that was six foot one, and I'm like, I'm tiny next to these guys. So I'm like, the right move is to move to 35. Um, I have a great team, you know, of course with the help of my coaches, and uh, I have a good nutritionist, and uh, they just, you know, we're making this work. And I'm like, yo, let's make the return to 35. That's the division I belong in, and, you know, let's go for it. Yeah, well, you know, you've had success. The guy that you're talking about that was 6'1", you, you you knocked him out with a head kick. So, <laughs> you know, it's not like you were forced to go down because it seems like a lot of times guys are forced to go down or grow up. So mentally, you know what I mean, moving down, how do you feel? I actually feel great, man. I feel like it's the division I belong. I mean, look, when I fought Shaman and when I fought Hakeem, you know, like I, I held my own in there and I felt fine, but... Like you see these guys are just like a lot bigger than me physically. I mean, look at my teammate Shane. He's fucking giant. <laughs> so it's like, I'm like, you know, I, you know, I feel like I can only go so far at 145. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the right move is go to 35 and then go back to making my run there. Level out the playing field. You know, that's what yeah. that's a common theme in, in, uh, in MMA, right? Now, with the dieting stuff, did you... Bring in a nutritionist, or has your nutritionist been with you the whole time? He's been with me the whole time, you know, like when I started, when I was in the UFC. So, you know, like before, like he he wasn't, you know, before when I was in the regional circuit, I didn't really have like a, like a good, like a, you know, I didn't have a nutritionist. So now that I have, you know, a proper nutritionist that can like, you know, we're, they, he's just like, okay, this is where you're going to eat. Boom. This is when you eat it. It's like everything's just more calculated where, you know, like I, I'm dropping down weight and I, and I feel great. Like I feel, I feel comfortable. At first I was like, oh, I don't know, 35. And then now that I have, I have the right people on my team, it makes it that much easier. Have you been following a, a meal plan the whole year, the whole 2020? Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I mean, like before this, before you know, like one of my one of my injuries was I I was I'll, so I'll kind of go back a little bit. I had to get elbow surgery on both arms because my arms were I, I didn't have extension on my arms. So think of it this way: I had like dinosaur arms, pretty much like a T Rex. So I couldn't I couldn't extend my arms the way I wanted to, and I kind of held off on getting surgery for for two years. But it was getting worse where, like, I was barely extending my arm. My arms were making, like, an L shape pretty much. And I'm like, I, I can't keep this going. So I got that taken care of. And then, you know, while I was there, I'm like, you know what? It's like, let me let me return to 35. Let me do this right. Heal up my injuries. You know, get on a proper, proper uh, nutrition. And, and like, I'm like, let's make this happen. So use the pandemic time to kind of help me heal up, get, and, you know, kind of get back on on track with everything and it's been working out great ever since so now that they're not you know like i have a fight coming up now it makes it even even easier because like it's like i'm like okay i was dropping weight but now i'm like now i gotta fight i'm like yeah i'm like i'm more hyped for it and i'm the weight's coming down so i'm feeling great man did you have both arms in a cast at the same time um i did i got one done and then, like, about a week and a half later, I got the other one done. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get more mobility in one arm because then I think going to the bathroom would have been a little tough. <laughs> so, 
So I had to, so I, so I had to time it just right, but I got them done pretty much one after the other, just so I could just get this taken care of, and then I can go back to fighting, go back to focusing. Not and really, I didn't want to just keep prolonging this. Oh, definitely, man. I think you made a great choice and almost seemed like it was perfect timing because 2020 is just everything kind of got shut down. So a lot of people had to stay at home for extended periods of time. What, did you have to stay at home for extended periods of time? I was at home for an extended period of time, but also, you know, I'm making sure that, uh, you know, like with when the moment started and everything got shut down, hold on a second, and everything got shut down, um, we we're making sure that our school was also up and running. So it's like, you know, my school in, in, in Bayside here in Queens, you know, we didn't want to just be like, OK, we're shutting our doors. So we had to kind of adapt to teaching through Zoom. We're trying through Twitch until eventually we could kind of go back to, you know, teaching classes in person. But, you know, it was it was a little bit of a it was actually it was like a blessing in disguise because during that I'm like, OK, you know, since I'm not fighting and I'm eating good and I'm kind of slowly getting back into after surgery let me focus on making sure like my school doesn't get shut down or it goes out of business I have to close my doors because there was you know because we had to shut down for a bit but we were like okay let's bring the school up keep everyone training as much as we could you know whether it's just through zoom just through twitch or now that we're doing live classes you know each time a little bit better but you know it was a good thing so it kind of worked out. It all worked out for everybody. So with with recovery and then the pandemic going on and, and your your place of work is is going struggling at the same time. And there was no times of frustration for you. There must have been. Right. Oh, yeah, man. It was it, it was frustrating because as I'm saying, you know, as I'm sitting there, I'm also looking at people fighting and I'm like, God damn, it's like the world's moving on with or without me, like especially in the fight world. So. You're like, ah, oh, damn, it's like, that should be me in there. And it gets frustrating, but it's like, yeah, man, it's like, you're, you're going to be able to make your return. It's like, right now, you just have to just get past and get the healing process down, and, and that's it. And just make sure that the school does well, because, you know, look, that it, this was it's like a pivotal moment where I'm like, all right, we got to get the students training. We got to make sure everything is going right. So... You know, like, I think it worked itself out. It was frustrating at first, but it's like you have to take a step back and be like, okay, let's kind of dissect this. And I'm like, how can we make this better? How can we make it easier? So that's exactly what we did. That's good to hear. I've spoken with a couple of fighters that were in the same situation as you, and they pulled through the pandemic and kept their gyms open and kept working and kept everybody intact, you know what I mean? And that's good. Now, with the with the training was it a slow process getting back into the normal training with, with the surgery and the recovery? Yeah, it was, it was a, like, I just had to take it, you know, like one day at a time and just making sure that I didn't, I didn't just, I didn't overdo it because as fighters, we're all kind of stubborn and we're like, ah, oh, we got, so we're good. They're like, you're clear to go. It's like, all right, we're going to go a hundred percent. I'm like, no, let me do this right. Had to go back to kind of like kind of my roots and just making sure that as I'm training, I'm not overdoing it where I can injure myself and then it's then I'm out again. You know what I mean? I'm like, let me do this right. Came back, took it one step at a time, and then I was like, all right, now we're in full force. Now we can go. So all worked out. Definitely, man. Now you got this fight coming up on February 6th versus Tamar Valiev. His debut was pretty insane. You know what I mean? What did you think about that first round of that fight? Oh, man. They look. Guy's tough as guy. He just keeps coming, and uh, he's got a lot of good setups for his kicks. Um, and then, you know, of course, uh, then he got clipped with that hook. And I, I'm sure, I think I forgot, that's the fight that they overturned because uh, the other guy got, I, he didn't get popped or something. I think it was like marijuana or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. It was overturned. But still, you know, it was it was an interesting debut. Yeah, it, it, I don't. Yeah, it was interesting. It's more of like I think that fight was considered comeback fight of the year for the other guy, Trevin Jones. Yeah, because he was he was actually um, he's that he, he was a huge underdog, wasn't he? Yeah, he was because he was coming in on like five days' notice. That's why yeah. he kind of got popped for that, you know, for the marijuana 
You know what I mean? Yeah, come on. It's like, let, let the guy enjoy whatever he wants to do. But it's like, <laughs> well, whatever. You know, it is yeah. what it is. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, when you break down, you know, your opponent, what is your overall assessment of, of his skill set? What do you see that, you know, that shines pretty well? I mean, he's a, he, he's got, he's, he's an interesting striker. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think it's going to be a very, very interesting, interesting stand up fight between me and him. Yeah, I think so but, too. I think that's exactly what you're saying. It's going to be a, a striking battle, but you know, with with you said what you said earlier about your elbows, right? You weren't able to extend your elbows for the past two years or so. And yeah. if they go back and study your tape, really, they they don't really know your full extent of your skill set because you haven't been able to use your arms properly. Yeah, I mean, look, I put, I put it to this way: I lost three about three inches of reach while I was doing this. So I was fighting. It's like it's like it's like as I was a T Rex trying to freaking punch somebody. So it so it sucked, but now it's like I got my reach back. I got and, and I'm just I'm just excited, man, to get back in there and freaking fight. I'm like, thank God it's over. Now, do you feel like moving down to 135, you know, again? But this is the first time in the UFC. Does it feel like a a, a start of a new chapter in your career, or is it just a continuation? It it's the start of a new chapter. Mm-hmm. It's like you start everything. Just it's a fresh start. Mm-hmm. So, and I and I'm excited for it because the bandweight division is popping right now. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the best, man. Uh, I think it's probably right there, neck and neck with the lightweight division of just killers. Yeah, you know, you're known to finish fights. Are you expecting the same in the in this debut at 135? You know what? I'm just gonna go in there and fight. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. It's gonna be a barn burner. It might be a finish. Who knows? Just get in there and fight. So, what's the plans for the the rest of the year? You know, what do you want to do? How many times do you want to fight? I want to be able to fight at least uh, three more times mm-hmm. this year. I feel like you know, like you know, I, I and I'm sure this is for every fighter that had like a a setback with injury. They want to make up for lost time. You know what I mean? So, I want to get you know more fights in and just. Stay busy this year. All right. Well, man, I'm excited for you to come back, man. Especially you're making your bantamweight debut February 6th, man. It's going to be fun. It's a fun matchup and two strikers going at it. Thank you, Julio, for the time and uh, all the best. Dude, of course, man. Thank you for having me.